forward. All right, so welcome everyone. I'm gonna minimize y'all on my screen. Um, so I won't be able to see you, but Chelsea is gonna be our wonderful person monitoring the chat. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in there and uh, Chelsea will you know, interrupt uh, Tracy or I to let us know what they are so that we're happy to answer. But for those of you who might not know, my name is Ashley Drew. I am the Director of Special Events and Field Development here at Pet Partners, and I am your best friend for fundraising success. Uh, and then my colleague Tracy will be joining me today. Tracy, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. My name is Tracy Pryor, and I'm the Chief Development Officer at Pet Partners. I've been here a uh, a little over eight years now. And I'm just so grateful to each and every one of you for your support and sharing your amazing pets with us. I can't wait to get to know them along the journey. I've already started following our candidates so I can see everybody's uh, social media posts and everything. So thank you so much. We just wanted to gather today and also record this as a resource to kind of go through uh, the pet of the year event and um, tips and also hearing from some of our fundraising superstars who've been involved in the past to share a little bit of their secrets, which is amazing too. So thanks, Ash. Yeah. And then uh, Chelsea, do you want to introduce yourself too, since you help with a lot of our fulfillment and you help me with wonderful thank yous and everything for our awesome donors and supporters? Sure. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Chelsea. I'm the development manager here with Pet Partners. Um, I've been here a little over a year so. Luckily, I was here in time for the first pet of the year last year, so I'm very excited to see um, everyone's pets uh, photos getting uploaded again, um, and I am kind of just a backup for Ash throughout this time, so you're also always welcome to reach out to me with any uh, questions or if you need assistance. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right, so we're going to get started with pet of the year. Um, let me see if my PowerPoint is going to work. There we go. All right, so some basics. What is Pet of the Year? So this is a six-week fundraising competition that's all about your wonderful, incredible pets. And so we really want this event to be fun for everybody. We want everyone to get excited to share photos, videos, share why you're participating. Um, and in turn, hopefully your friends and supporters will help you and make donations. And that's kind of just a little bit about us. And all of the money that we raise through our Pet of the Year program supports our therapy animal program, um, which helps underwrite a lot of the costs for that, um, which is a really incredible program. And I know many of you are therapy animal teams and some of our new folks that have joined are in progress and becoming teams and some others have asked to learn more information. So we're excited to share that with you. So if you want to learn about becoming a therapy animal team, please just shoot us a message and we'd be happy to connect you with our TAP team that can send over some information. All right, the national title of Pet Partners Pet of the Year will be awarded to the team who raises the most money during the fundraising competition. Um, we'll have uh, prizes and awards for first place, second place, and then if we have a close tie with third, we do have some items secured for that as well. Um, as you all know, fundraising kicked off last Wednesday and it will go through um, March 15th, which I think is either a Wednesday or a Thursday. Let me just look real quick. Yeah, Wednesday the 15th at 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and then some other fun stats. So um, as of this morning, we actually have 102 pet candidates. Um, but yesterday <laughs> when I was updating this, we had 97. So we've had a few others join, but some of the fun species We've got an alpaca, we've got a pig, um, we've got a rainbow bridge candidate, which is Vincent the therapy rat. We've got some lizards. So we've got some species, some new species. And I'm sorry, our cat Otis is, <laughs> is here. So in case you see him, he's joining me for this call. We've got two lizards, um, two horses, a bunch of rabbits, a bunch of therapy cats, which is really great. And we've got dogs and then we've got um, one rainbow bridge dog that's participating. And so the great thing about this event is that it's open to any and all pets. It's not just um, exclusive to therapy animals. So we really love that we're able to be inclusive and let people honor a special pet in their life through um, this competition. We've got um, almost 182 human supporters now um, as of this morning, and our goal is to raise uh, $97,000 through our pet of the year, 
and um, we're going to continue to accept nominations through February 15th. So if you know anybody who might want to participate, um, they're welcome to nominate their pet till the 15th. All right. Um, any questions just yet? All right, perfect. Tracy, you want to talk a little bit about our prizes and our incentives? Yes, I won't go through every single prize yeah. and incentive, <laughs> but there's a lot and it's really fun because it's it's a wonderful, fun opportunity to celebrate your pet and what the joy they bring to your life personally, your family, your friends, your network, if they are visiting or a therapy animal, the, the joy that they spread and the love that they bring to so many people. And so just in addition to just feeling good and celebrating your animal and, you know, putting a spotlight on them, we wanted to put together some really fun prizes for our winners. So our top, you know, pet of the year that raises the most we have put together in addition to bragging rights because let's be honest it's great <laughs> to be able to just have the title really fun things to celebrate your pet so your pet will be featured on our national t-shirt campaign your pet will oh I bounced Sorry. forward I know look it's the cat <laughs> <laughs> hey kitty um we'll have um national media interviews um Steve Dale who's a radio host will um interview you a wellness pet who is an amazing pet food sponsor of ours um, is donating pet treats for a year. We've got a spa package from Spectrum Brands, a photo shoot. So, and the little sash and the trophy, and just really a lot of fun things, donated things, things that we've um, worked with our sponsors to provide. And so we really just want to make it fun and celebratory. I love that little cuddle clone, which is where you get a custom stuffed animal made of your pet. Just really, really fun thing. So all of the prizes are listed on the website. There's a drop down um, that has all of the prizes there. The runner up package is a lot of the same, you know, the, the pet treats, a six month supply of treats and some gift baskets, Tito's Vacas put together something. Um, we have an artist that's doing a pet portrait, um, Cinnamon Wolf Studios, and um, just a lot of fun things. So we have these big prizes for our top candidates, but we also have little things to keep you motivated and incentives along the way so you can have a chance when you get started with your fundraising um, a really early win is you can get if you raise fifty dollars or more your pet can get their bandana um, you can um, get this polo which is for 250 or more and i saw a lot of candidates kind of wearing this i just saw a photo recently of a candidate mm -hmm. last year still wearing it so it's just a wonderful way to kind of um, conversation starter. What is that? And you can tell them a little bit about you and your pet and what you're working towards. So um, the prize packages. Oh, this is an important note. Whenever you um, reach a certain level on prizes, we do need to report this to the IRS. It's um, a 1099. So just know that once you get over that 599 level, um, that's a requirement of the IRS. Um, and Ash can work with the winners on that. But I do want to mention that specifically. Yep, Anything I'm perfect. forgetting on that, Ash? Nope, nope. I was just going to mention that as well. So that's something um, that we're learning a little bit more about um, is the 1099 process. So for the first, second um, place winners, um, what we'll do is whenever we crown the winners, we'll actually get on the phone with you to go over each of the prizes. And so you can decide which of the prizes you'd like to accept if you want all of them or if there's ones that you don't want. Um, and then whatever you are issued, if it's over $599 in value, you will be issued a 1099. Um, so this has been um, a learning experience for all of us. And so, yeah, we want to just make it as fun as possible for everyone. Cool. And then there's other prizes you can earn um, along the way. Mm -hmm. So say you've, you've raised more, we have different levels. This is a really cool program that we do, with, which has a lot of different choices to give a little um, flexibility and maybe even a way to um, motivate. Like if you have maybe a young family member that's helping you with fundraising, you could get some, them some prizes or there's pet oriented ones or human apparel. And this is a really easy process where as you reach these different thresholds, you'll get like a, a code that you can enter in and then they'll be automatically sent to you. Um, and Ash provides great updates along the way, but you'll see it's just tons of different things, little options um, mm -hmm. as you reach different levels. Some folks may decide they, that they want to decline those, and that's just more money towards the mission. Others, it's a great way to kind of keep that fundraising ticking up. And so we know everybody has a different style and different ways that they're motivated. So we try really hard to celebrate and honor your efforts with some great prizes and incentives along the way. Yep. 
And then for anybody who does um, raise $250 or more for these um, incentive prizes that we just showed, um, you will get your certificate. It'll be after the event closes. So it'll be that following week of, I believe, March 20th. Um, you'll get an email. I usually send a notification saying, hey, this email looks really spammy, <laughs> but please know it is legitimate. It is from us and our vendor. Um, and so it's safe to use the code and go to their website. And so, um, and then if you don't get it, I also send out an email just to let us know, and then we can have the code reissued to you um, as well. All right. Um, I can't see everyone, but I know Sarah was in another meeting. Sarah, are you able to join yet? Let me see who we have. Okay. I'm here. Casey Arnold. Yes. Yeah. Casey, I know you, you and uh, Carol Ann. So I'll skip over Sarah really quick. Oh, I might launch that video. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> learning process. All right, I'm going to skip through these. Oh, more videos. Hold on. Okay. Oh, I keep clicking the videos, y'all. <laughs> I'm not made for the managing this. <laughs> All right, let me see if I can get to Casey's page. Quincy. So while um, I'm getting there, yes. So our second place, Ashley. So we'd like to welcome Quincy Adams and there it Taylor is. Casey. Yes. There we are. <laughs> Finally, it's a win. So they came in second place last year. And so we would love to hear from you, your experience and any ideas that you can share with this year's candidates. Because um, what we were talking about before we started the recording is about only 28% of our pet candidates for this year have already started their fundraising. So we're hoping that this video will be able to give them a lot of great ideas for those who haven't started just yet to kind of get their campaign kicked off. All right, well, thank you. And me and Quincy are here. He just got out of his bed and decided to walk around to my desk. He's He comes to my office every day. So um, when this started up, I was a little nervous because I'd never done anything like this for an online marketing campaign. I didn't know how to do a lot of the templates that were there, but I learned and I tried at least a lot of the tools that pet partners had shared with us. So I did the picture in a frame. I did a lot of the things that were online. I posted on Facebook. Um, and I also, one thing I went to was my pet partners therapy group. So our, we have a, a, an organization, the Visiting Pet Teams of South Mississippi here. And so I went to them and I said, hey, I'd like your support. I am doing this as a part of Pet Partners. And uh, they were all in and, and, and helped me out quite a bit. Um, the, I think that an important thing is to watch the numbers. Is, is it open the whole time this year? I wasn't sure. Uh, um, no, we'll be taking down the leaderboards and taking some um, okay. guidance and feedback that we got from candidates last year. Yeah, so the I, I watched that a lot and put in my larger donations towards, uh, um, I was kind of competitive. And uh, <laughs> so I'll be honest. And But the, the truth is, uh, raising $24,000 wasn't very easy. But I um, my father had passed away that year and I wanted to honor his name. And so I donated in honor of Quincy, a large donation uh, from my father's memory because he had um, passed away. And then I have an, or my, I run a business. I, I run the diabetes center uh, here in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. So my organization donated a large donation. Um, so I kind of found larger ways of meeting that target. And then my smaller donations just filled in and built up on that. So um, I think those were the key things for me was having, you know, access to honor my dad through the monies that I lot I had um, was given through his will. And, and I just felt that was really a great thing to do to honor my father and uh, Quincy. And that this shirt, this picture, I, I wear this shirt every time I do pet therapy evaluations. <laughs> so it's my favorite shirt when I'm doing pet therapy evals, because sometimes people ask me about that. And I can say Quincy Adam was the first runner up for the, for the, for the program and encourage others to jump in and participate in that. So those are my biggest things. 
That's awesome. Thank you so much. And I love I love hearing that feedback um, on the polos too, because that was our first time that we've ever um, ordered or offered those as an incentive. Um, so that's really wonderful. Well, you, you all so are much. great spokes models. <laughs> Look at that picture. What a precious <laughs> pair. Oh, that's amazing. And thank you for honoring your dad's memory in that mm. way and reaching out to your network. Do you find that most of the local folks were eager to support you all? Was it well received when you invited it, folks to give? Yeah, you know, and it's not just with something like this as a fundraiser. When I go to my group and say, hey, I need some teams for pet therapy. I need a neutral dog. I, I go to my group and I pass around a list and, and they, the whole page is filled for the year when I get that kind of support from my, my local group. So I, I really encourage you to reach out to your, the, the groups that are in your area as well. That's great. I think it's important to think as, as some of you may be newer to fundraising or maybe even a little apprehensive or uncomfortable, like I hate asking people for things. If you kind of just reframe your mindset just a bit to think of this as a, just an invitation for folks to make a difference, an invitation mm -hmm. for somebody to give a gift that can make a difference for so many people. So just think, you know, and somebody may decline that invitation, but we shouldn't decide for them. So just to kind of think about it as I'm, I'm giving someone an opportunity to make an impact and choose to support us, or even if they might say, I can't support you, but I'm happy to share your your um, story. I'm happy to share about your pet and maybe even become a, um, an extension of your voice. So um, thanks for being brave and asking so many folks to support and passionately going with it. You all were amazing candidates and I'm glad you're still wearing the shirt because it sure oh, looks yeah. good. Great. <laughs> that's wonderful. And I think that's a great way into plan because I don't think Sarah's joined just yet, but um, plan, you know, she's, a wonderful handler as well. And she's Reg Mojo who came in third place. It was very close and she got her school involved and in teaching those kids that, you know, when they're making those asks that, you know, no, doesn't mean no, it just means not right now. And seeing, you know, their persistence was really exciting. So Carolyn, I'd love to welcome you and have you talk a little bit about what y'all did. Thanks. Um, yeah, it was a great experience. We did not have large donations coming in, so we did it all grassroots. So for those of you that are worried about trying to find large donations, we did it literally a quarter at a time. Um, we raised 23000 <clears throat> but I'm telling you bit by bit, the kids sold candy. They we did it from literally grassroots. We sold tiny pieces at a time. I will say, take advantage of um, some of the things that I learned. Uh, take advantage of those matching funds. Mm -hmm. That did help us. But what I did is I teach middle school. And so I took my students. I had 12 students last year. I took my students and we separated into teams and each team was a competitive team. So those teams, as you can see on the board, one went to the local pizza place and stuff that, you know, tried to get, sell pizzas. We did puzzles. We did paint parties at our local pet store. I, we did as many things as we possibly could. It all started, I'm a librarian and I got a book called The Art of the Ask. And I went through my, with my students as a book, uh, as a book project with my kids, we went chapter by chapter and really learned about the art of the ask. And well, I will tell you one ask it. It's very, very simple. Just, just being brave enough to ask somebody is half the battle. And then once you get past that, the ask, like Ashley said, Sometimes it's the answer is no, but it's like, no, not yet. Or no, that's too high. You're just looking for the yes. Um, you'll get yeses. You will. And, but you do that by telling your story. You don't do it by just saying, Hey, can you donate? And this helps pet partners. You say this made a huge difference in my life. You give a personal testimony. Mojo being at school changed the lives of kids at school. Can you help do that for more schools? And people give. They give because kids are giving their personal testimony on why that ask is so important. So one, don't ever be afraid of the ask. And two, when you ask, ask with your personal 
touch. Why is your pet so important to you? What has your pet done for you? Because when people hear how much that animal human bond is, is so wonderful, they want to help. They just, they just might not know how sometimes Mm -hmm. and leave that ask open-ended. I did learn a very valuable lesson with my students. Um, When students asked people, can you, can you donate $10 to pet partners? The answer is sure. I, I can donate $10. But when kids said, Mojo's making a huge difference in my life. Look at all of these things that he's done. Can you donate to pet partners and didn't put a dollar sign? People were giving a hundred, five hundred, a thousand dollars. So sometimes people want to help. If you limit them and say only give ten dollars, mm-hmm. sure they will. But if you don't give them a dollar amount, people tend to give more. That's just for my my own personal experience. But it is about that story. The story is the most important. Awesome. I think that's a great point to put any personal connection you can with it, Mm -hmm. because some of you all are handlers and you can talk about some specific places you visit or um, types of folks that you have impacted. If you're not a handler, but you maybe you have a personal connection where a family member, a loved one or a friend has been on the receiving side of a therapy animal visit. And you can talk a little bit more about the therapy animal program Mm -hmm. or just like Mojo, just animals make us feel better. They relieve our stress. They bring us joy, whether it's a therapy animal or a beloved pet, just making that connection and being heartfelt in your approach, I think is really important. It's also funny because you you have different, like the pizza joint, you know, or something like that. Think about if you are going to um, do some type of little special event, you said you did treats and, you know, small donations and things like that. If you're like a beer and pizza type of person, maybe you shouldn't do like a wine and cheese party, you know, make sure it fits your personality, <laughs> something that you feel comfortable with. That's fun that your network of folks will want to be involved in. So just, yeah, we had, we, had, yes, we had donations. People give donations. So we did a ruffle instead of a raffle Aww. and we sold ruffle tickets And, um, but people donated all kinds of stuff, spa packages and angels tickets, like all kinds of stuff. And then we just raffled off, did raffles, um, Mm -hmm. for the kids, but each raffle was a winner. So I bought scratch offs from Amazon. You can get those scratch off stickers. And so each scratch off won something and they got to put it into a raffle. So like we gave away candies and stickers and tattoos, and all kinds of random stuff because everyone won something. So ask people too to donate so you can like do a, your own raffle. It was mm-hmm. very simple, cost us nothing. That's yep. great. That is, that's really great. And then we've got templates for all of this stuff too. Um, so if there's something that any of y'all need, you know, we've got ask letters, we've got cold call scripts. We've Take got it advantage all. of that because we did, we, I mean, we, our kids had so many video conferences with Ashley, please <laughs> take advantage of these people because the pet partners are so supportive of you. They will help you. They'll say, here's a phone script. If you want to do a, a cold call or here's an example letter and you just fill it in with your stuff. It's very, very simple. It's already done. You just put in your name. And again, it's like, it's just the ask, just put yourself out there and just try the ask. I'm fully expecting a full circle moment here where one of these, one of these students of yours is going to end up on the um, development fundraising staff for pet partners in a few years. We were very impressed with their effort and their diligence and their hard work and their bravery in fundraising. So you you have some future fundraisers out there that might turn this into their profession. I'm telling you. So great job. For real. Thank you. It was, it was great fun. It was great fun for me to, a great learning experience for the kids, but True. Like we had kids, they were writing letters to Coca-Cola to big, or they didn't get any of it, but the fact that they dreamt big and went out there and did that, I could not have been more proud of them. Amazing. Awesome. Well, it looks like, um, Sarah might be still running a little late from her previous meeting. So I'm just going to keep moving forward. We're going to talk about some of my fundraising ideas that, um, Casey and Carol Ann didn't mention um, that you might consider doing. Um, Super Bowl's coming up. People love to win money. And so consider doing a Super Bowl pool. 
um, where half the funds collected go to the winner and then the other half go to your fundraising campaign. Um, that's something that's really fun and easy to do. Um, that's also not a direct ask where it's like a win-win for both sides. And sometimes that person that wins will donate back their portion of the money and then 100% goes to your fundraising. Um, ask letter writing campaigns, similar to what they were talking about. We've got templates for everything. If you need email templates, we have um, three that are pre-drafted that you can personalize. Just ask, it's also on the website under the tools and printables section. Um, we talked about raffles, the percentage back with the pizza nights, um, game night. If you like to play poker, Texas Hold'em is also another fun way um, or board games. Something new that we have this year is um, Bonfire Shirt Campaign. So they just launched a peer-to-peer -peer, um, fundraising um, opportunity where you can create your own t-shirts with either your pet's likeness or we have a um, template that our marketing team created. Um, and so we'll be sending an email, their candidate update will actually be going out a little bit later today and it'll have um, a tutorial video. So if you were interested in creating and selling shirts as your fundraiser. We do have that opportunity where you can create your own or you can use a template that's already created for you. And um, you get to just determine the pricing of the shirts. Um, and then you get a percentage back from each shirt that you sell. Um, am I missing anything on the bonfire, Tracy? No, I mean, I think it's a great, it's a great way to build team spirit too. If you're one of those candidates yeah. that have other humans helping you under to, to all have matching shirts and do some mm -hmm. group work together. I think that's fantastic. The hosting event thing, that's like I said, you could pick something to just fits your personality and could be, you know, something I did a fundraiser one time for pet partners where I just had like, um, a happy hour at my house and I invited a couple of our um, handlers to come and it was just for my neighbors because I had always talked about pet partners and they didn't really know what I did and I just wanted to, to host something and I did that open-ended where I just said oh it, you know I had treats I had some cocktails and then a couple of therapy animal handlers there and then just kind of said you know if you want to support pet partners here's how you do it here's the link or whatever and, um, you know, raised a couple thousand dollars just doing like a Thursday night little thing for my neighbors, which I love to socialize anyways. So just, you know, it can just be a nice way to kind of tell your story, a little connection and celebrate that relationship you have with your pets. Um, and I just th think, you know, get creative. And if you can build a network of folks, you know, the way that our website works is you can register your candidate, but then have other folks supporting you where what they raise rolls up to your, um, mm -hmm. your candidate, your pet candidates total. So to just say, hey, you know, you know, all these people from your work, or you know, all these people from your book club or whatever that I don't know, can you help me spread the word and supporting those team members in doing this? Um, it's a fun activity. And it's just we try to put, you know, technology tools and examples and all that for you. Um, and are really hoping to, you know, provide you guidance along the way throughout this competition, this multi-week competition. So just know as you have ideas, um, there's a good chance we've had past candidates or other fundraisers um, that have done something similar, and we may have some tips and tricks and tools for you. So um, if you ever find yourself sitting down to create something from scratch, pause, go to Ashley and say, hey, <laughs> what about this? Because there's a good chance we might have some support for you that you you don't have to start from scratch on. Yep. And that's that's great point too. Um, also, I, I know I've already talked to some pet parents that anything can really be turned into a fundraiser. <laughs> so it is really thinking about what it is that you like to do and then call me <laughs> and we can show you how we can spin it into something that can raise money on behalf of your pet. All right. Let's see, is Sarah? Hey, Sarah. Can you hear us? Hey, Sarah, if you're able to hear us, I think you're on mute and we're happy to go back to happy, happy Hazel slides if you wanna, if now's a good time. Let's see if I can go back and not click on a video. <laughs> uh, 
Sarah, um, are you able to unmute your microphone? Okay, we'll, we'll keep moving on. And then Sarah, if you can, just let me know when I'm happy to go back. All right, so up next, I think, are our Spotlight Awards. So um, this event is just really fun. Um, and so with our Spotlight Awards, we like to recognize as many pets that are participating as possible. And so last year, I think we gave, um, gave out almost 30 Spotlight Awards, which um, highlight pets for all different things. So it's not just based off of fundraising efforts. So I know many pet parents have messaged me about like, what are all these points? How are we getting points? And so that's through the activities. So every time you post a photo, share a video, um, ask a friend to join your pet's team, you're earning points. And as you do that, um, you earn points for different leaderboards. And so some of those are linked to spotlight awards, um, such as the recruitment leader, activity ace, um, picture perfect. Um, and then some of these ones are a little more self-explanatory. Real fun is for people who are posting TikTok videos. Um, top tweeter is for the pet parent that's posted the most tweets. And so um, we like to have these be fun and playful. We get a lot of our staff involved that aren't necessarily part of our development team. And they help with a lot of the voting for like the most unique name, who's the most spirited, most creative event. And then obviously looking at all of the cute photos and videos um, is also a really fun one. Um, so that's kind of what our spotlight awards are. And so that'll be part of our celebration on March 16th, um, which will be held at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so that if anybody is working, they should be able to join and it's always recorded. So we'll be able to share it. But we also notify all of the winners so that you can also invite your friends and family to join. You do not have to have Facebook to be able to tune in for the Facebook live, which is really nice. Um, so we do share a link for that too, so that anybody who wants to join in the fun and, you know, celebrate everybody who's participated, um, that they're able to. All right. Next up are some resources. Um, so I've heard some folks mention, mention the custom social frame. So that's Ruben there in the corner. Um, these are something fun that our marketing team will create for you. We have under the um, social media graphics tab on the website. Um, you can request these. You can request, I believe, up to two images this year. And so you can submit photos and we can create those. We've got a bunch of different forms as well that have gone out in some of our candidate updates. Um, so corporate gifts. This year, we're able to accept crypto donations. So if you know anybody who's into crypto, um, they can make a donation through our donate tab um, as well. Monthly giving forms. So if you have a friend or family member that wants to give $10 for the next 12 months, you can have them fill out that form and then your pet would be credited for the $120 gift instead of just the $10 gift because we would mark it and put it in the system for the 12 month pledge. Um, same thing goes for corporate. If you get um, any businesses to make donations, but say they only pay on a quarterly basis or they won't be able to cut you a check um, until after fundraising has closed. If you have them fill out that form and then you provide it to us, we'll put it in as a pledge under your goal thermometer so that it counts towards your totals. Um, and then same that's thing important if, too to yeah. think about if you're any of your donors, you know, happen to work mm -hmm. for a larger company or corporation, it is very common for these larger companies to have a charitable giving budget where they often match their employees charitable mm -hmm. giving to to um, share in the commitment that their employees have to make their communities a better place. So it's often, a, it can often be a, a 
mat, a full match, 100% match. So if somebody gives $100 to you, it's very um, realistic if they work for a company that has a matching gift program um, that, that that may be matched. So it's really um, important to think about that. We have on our website too a section where they can put in their company's name and see if it is a matching gift company and if there is a process um, for you know where you have to submit that request. But we can credit those matching gifts, which is amazing. Yep. Thanks for bringing that up, Tracy, because yeah, we didn't have that on there. Matching gifts are very great thing to have. And again, um, some pet parents have already notified me that their friends have applied for their matching gift, but they're like, it says it won't be paid until May. If you forward us that communication, we're able to put it in as a pledge on the system so that you won't miss out on any of that. So when in doubt, just ask or send it on over because um, we make sure that we track all of that kind of stuff. Um, Media Toolkit and is, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. Hi, everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we have a question from Carol. Perfect. Uh, she says that she likes our social frames that we have offered, uh, but some of them have the header as returning pet of the year candidate. Um, okay. But because Carol will be a new um, participant this year, she's wondering if there is a more generic version of these templates that don't include the returning portion um, or maybe have uh, some other wording for uh, these new participants? Sure. Yeah, we can definitely reach out to marketing about that. I th that I'm hoping I'm hoping it was just an example for any pets that were coming back for a second year. Um, but let me look into that. Yeah, it looks like the Ruben example is just help Ruben win pet of the year, donate to our fundraiser today. So hopefully there's some choices for you, Carol. Yeah. Any other questions real quick? That is everything in the chat so far, but everyone feel free to drop questions in and I will uh, relay them to Ash and Tracy as we're talking. Thanks, Thanks Chelsea. Uh, media toolkit. So that went out in our candidate update, I believe last week. So that's another really great one. So if you're looking to get um, some local attention, um, we've got press releases, media releases, we've got um, all sorts of great um, things that you can personalize and send to your local news outlets. And then our, if you also responded saying that you were interested in interviews, our PR company has been pitching over 2000 outlets across the country um, trying to get some interviews. So we are working on those just to give you a quick update. Um, so it's, it's something that's really fun to do. Um, and if you can get it, it's also really cool. And if you share it with us, sometimes we're able to share it out as well. Um, templates, we've talked about a few times. We've got a template for everything. And if we don't have it, we can certainly create it. <laughs> so if there's anything that you need, just let us know and we're happy to make that happen. Any other resources you think that we're missing, Tracy? No, and we kind of will continue to send you all. When do you send your communicate your candidate communication out? Because that's ongoing too. So yep, every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, check your email because there'll be some tools, tips, updates, and fun things. Um, as And sometimes, you know, some of our best resources and ideas come from requests from candidates. And they'll say, hey, can you help me with this? And we're like, of course. And we're going to share it with some other. Now, maybe you don't want to share it with your competition, but we're fair and square here. So if we develop some resources, oftentimes it's because of great ideas that you all have. So let us know so we can keep deepening our library of tools for you all. And that's a good point. We have had a couple of pet parents create um, QR codes that take donors right back to their page. So there is like a free QR code app that you can utilize to create one to direct it back to your uh, pet candidates page. So that's something else if you're into that. And then I just want to check back. Sarah, um, are you ready to share? I think I'm having some tech problems. Yes. Oh, perfect. Let me... Hey. Hi, welcome. All right, I'll jump back. We're doing great. I'll jump back to your sorry, slide. Sorry we're late. It was one of those crazy days. No, that's perfectly fine. So everybody, we are so excited to welcome Sarah. She is Happy Happy Hazel's mom. And they did a bunch of fun things um, for their fundraisers. Let me just get back one more. All right, Sarah, you want to share a little bit about what y'all did with your schools and all your different fundraising avenues? 
Absolutely. We had so much fun. Um, I think the key is to, you know, if you're working at a school or, or you're working at a hospital, sort of partner with those people that, that your animal is, is um, working with. For us, Hazel worked in several different locations. Uh, this first picture is with her at Thousand Oaks Elementary School. These are kids um, who are military kids whose families are deployed. And basically we did this is with Hazel on Valentine's Day. So the kids themselves got together a committee. They put the whole thing together. They did posters. They collected the money. They organized room by room, which kids were going to get their pictures taken. And then Hazel dressed up in her Valentine's dress. Uh, they had a backdrop. We actually had, we, we got these frames from Amazon and we let the kids decorate them. And then they slipped the picture in there. Uh, you can get these pictures printed um, at CVS, which is our local pharmacy, for about 10 cents each. So you can go take the pictures, run down the pharmacy, get them printed, let the kids decorate their frames, and they've got a great Valentine's gift for, for their parents or friends or whatever. So it was a great event. I think what we did wrong is we only charged $5. And we really should charge 10 because it was something that they really enjoyed having. So, so that was one of our fundraisers. Um, next, we did, well, the, in the bottom right-hand corner, that's the committee that worked on the uh, on Hazel's project. Uh, the next one we did was our Healing Arts with Hazel, also called PAW-CASO, P-A-W-CASO. Um, the kids each paid. Um, we got the uh, PTA to provide the supplies. So they bought the canvases on um, they bought the canvases on Amazon. We got a so basically what they did is they got acrylic, acrylic paint and they put their paint on the canvases. As you can see on the bottom, that's H Frazel. And from all IP for bucks. That's Hazel siblings. Um, then they went and they filled in the canvas. Then we covered it with a sheet, kind of like uh, that you use for scrapbooks or photo sheet. So we slipped it in this plastic sleeve. We put honey and peanut butter on it. And it would let Hazel go to work. So she looked the honey and peanut butter off. And then we took it out of the sleeves. You see the bottom left hand corner of Hazel's picture, but you can see all the kids in the pictures and, and their artwork. And it was so much fun. And the kids had something to take home. And it just, they made a lot of money doing it. So that was our, um, our Picasso's. And then basically, what else did we do? Uh, I'm trying to find the videos. I thought they were yeah, in the next Oh, here they are. Yep. Uh, there go. So, we posted the videos on social media, got more people following us. Do you have the music on that? Yeah, let me see if it'll play. Can you hear it? I can't. It might just be playing in my ear. Good. I can't. Yeah, it might just be playing in my headset, but still very cute. Okay, so they had fun music behind it. Um, basically showed the committee. Um, the flyers that they were making had Hazel's picture on it. Um, this is another one of the flyers. And then their posters, they basically stood out when the kids were being dropped off and showed the posters. And that's the final product. So that was Kisses with Hazel. That was all the cash she got. And it was all cash. So we had to convert that to a money order and send that in. Um, the next one underneath it is, which one, Ashley? Um, what? See, I don't know why this won't minimize. Oh, oh good. There it okay. goes. 
visits her with the with the PTA. And for her, the PTA was just they love Hazel. They love what she does for the school. And they just wanted to do this. So that's why the PTA meetings that they're talking about these fundraisers. We have the principal and counselor, and of course, Miss Hazel down there. Uh, so this was a day where they where they um, presented the check. Uh, they raised about twenty one hundred dollars or so. Um, I wish we had the the sound because it was really cute. Mm -hmm. But we took these videos and then we posted on social media. Then we got people watching this and actually donating also on on our Facebook page. So that was a lot of fun there. Um, let's see what the last one is. This one's from her birthday party. That was her birthday. Well, Hazel's birthday is in February. So we did a social media fundraiser for her, for her birthday. That's Hazel uh, loving her therapy visits. Uh, that's her in the middle. And of course it's gonna show her as being the most laid back dog sitting on the floor. Um, but yeah, so that was her birthday. Um, we also did a couple of things. The PTA uh, basically got these, the classrooms to donate and the kids with the most money for the classrooms. Uh, we did cupcakes with Hazel. So we brought cupcakes for everyone in the classroom and they got a little special visit from Hazel. She visited them, we took pictures, um, and each of those raised three or $400 each. Um, and then we did movie day with Hazel where she went into like the auditorium and everybody that bought a ticket was able to have Hazel visit with them. They got to pick the movie and they got to watch a movie, get out of class, and we provide the popcorn. So, you know, we'll back to popcorn for everybody. So it's just, it was lots of fun. Yeah. Um, in addition, you know, we reached out to some of our corporate partners that know what Hazel's doing in the community. Mm -hmm. So it's people that I knew, my husband knew, uh, people from the facilities that we visit. And just, they knew, they know what a difference she makes in the community. Um, and so they just wanted to give, and we got uh, donations anywhere from a hundred dollars up to, I think maybe five thousand uh, dollars from from different um, from different partners. So you know, don't be afraid to go out there and ask. Um, Hazel did write a thank you note. Uh, we had some. I don't know if I have them in front of me. But we did thank you cards with something like these pictures that had Hazel's picture on it that we had printed. And it was just a personal thank you to everyone that donated that we had their names. And I think it's so important just to give thanks to people because, mm -hmm. you know, they're out there, they're raising money, and they got a cute little picture of Hazel that they could put on their desk or they could frame or whatever. But it's just nice to say thank you and let them know that we appreciate them and what they donated. So um, it's really important to just stay on top of them. You know, send out emails. Uh, Hazel had a big following on social media. So we have little giveaways. Um, she's she's also done a lot of fundraising, as you can tell. So she had Fiesta medals that we would we give away. But just whatever the season is, we. We gave away little stuffies that looked like her. Just different things that you can think of. Um, they have, I don't know if you have the, uh, um, on the picture I can show you. Hold on just a second. I don't know if you can see these. Can you see these? Okay, so these are Hazel's little stuffies that she gives when she goes to visit people um, at the bereavement center. So we did some auctions for things like this where they could get a little stuffed animal of Hazel. These are sold on Amazon. They're like 10 bucks a piece and people will pay up to hundred bucks for these. 
if you do an auction for them on, on social media. So uh, yeah, so this is this was our little Hazel study. So that's about it. Um, you can reach out to us. We have our strategies. Um, there's always a strategy to everything you do. And if you want to reach out to us um, through Hazel social media or through the through the Pet Partners uh, social media page, we're happy to share any of our secrets, tricks of the trade, or help you in any way we can. Just excited you're doing this and good luck. Awesome. Thanks yeah. so much, Sarah. You're welcome. It's our pleasure. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chelsea, do we have any um, any questions that have come in in the last little bit that we can answer? Um, is there a place uh, for people to view those uh, wonderful videos that Sarah had made? Yeah, we can certainly share those. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Yep, we can include a link um, in the candidate update today. Yeah, and basically we did those through Canva. Um, I'm not very uh, tech savvy, and I figured it out. But you know, I can help anybody um, if they want to do it. But Canva is just a great tool. You can do some great social media posts and, and videos and all kinds of stuff. So uh, that's what I would recommend. Awesome. Yeah. Any other questions? That was everything. All you right. You guys covered it all. Perfect. Well, we're on to, oh, I think, our last one or two slides. So donations. Now, <laughs> now through March 15th. Um, the cutoff will be 11.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, what we did last year is we didn't um, disable any donations, but any donations that come in after that time will not be credited um, towards your pet candidates overall totals. But again, commitment forms for either monthly gifts, corporate gifts, or if you have anybody that wants to donate um, cryptocurrency, please send those to us before March 15th. Um, anything that's going to be mailed to the office needs to be um, received in the office by Tuesday because uh, Chelsea and Susan will go through everything on Wednesday so we can get all those totals finalized. Um, and again, if you find any donations that are missing, and um, we have that happen where people are like, oh, my friend said that they donated, but it's not showing up on my goal thermometer, please let us know. Sometimes they accidentally go to petpartners.org and go through our general donate button or um, if they just make a general donation to pet of the year and they don't select um, your pet candidate's name, sometimes that happens too. And it's a very easy fix, uh, but we just need to be made aware of it. Um, but otherwise, I, I hope you all have tons of fun with your campaigns. And if there's anything we can do to help, please let us know. Uh, it's, it's obviously a passion of mine and Tracy's and <laughs> Chelsea's. Uh, that's why we went into it as our job. And so um, we're here to help and we wanna see you be successful and have a really good um, time participating. So. Thank you so much to our past candidate superstars yes. for sharing their trade secrets. That was very generous of you. I feel like we've got an old family recipe or something we're not supposed <laughs> to have. So thank you all for sharing your expertise and your enthusiasm with us. It's very inspiring to hear yes. all the fun and creative and just adorable ways. You can tell it wasn't it was just fun for those um, young people that you engaged, for your supporters that were able to, you know, write those heartfelt donations out. And all of the creative energy you put into it is so evident. And that's why you all were so successful with your efforts. So thank you for sharing with our candidates this year. Perfect. Any other questions, comments before we let y'all get back to your day? Nothing else in the chat. All right. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thank, thank you again. Happy fundraising. And good luck. <laughs> Thanks, bye -bye. everyone.